Hey everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. Come paint along with me. So grab a brush, grab some models, grab some paints, and paint along. And as always, if you want to buy your own Jay t-shirt, like I respect that, check out my shirt store at, uh, my Spreadshirt store at miniwargamerj.spreadshirt.com. And uh, today I will be continuing to work on my uh, Imperial Fist Army, finishing up the metallics, and probably that'll take me the entire video, so it'll be okay. So it's all good, so let's get started, and I'll keep talking about what's going on. Life's good. We'll talk about it. Yeah. So hey everyone, so where am I working on right now? I'm working on uh, my Imperial Fists, as I said. So here they are, coming along, these uh, Tactical Marines. Let me just make sure it's all nice and correctly, there we go, focused in. So, yeah, today I'm just going to keep on painting them. Now, as always, as I said, I'm going to have to start starting my videos like this, and it's unfortunate, but I have to. Um, if you want the painting with Jays and all my, my content to keep coming, please consider, you know, if you don't want to, no problem, please consider supporting my Patreon page or the Warp, because either one will help my videos keep coming, you know. Once the Warp becomes completely autonomous, any future funds become... You know, we'll just go towards my free content. That way I can have awesome free content and war content. And that way everyone wins. So, please consider either. And that's what I'm going to discuss a little bit today and stuff. But that's because my last week has been about that. But uh, let me start off by talking about, wow, the craziness. Now, today's, today's Wednesday. I'm pre-filming this episode of Painting with Jay because tomorrow I'm going to be busy. But today, the big news in the States was this Virginia reporter shooting, and it's really unfortunate. Basically, it looks like a disgruntled ex-employee walked up to a filming. Like the, It was a reporter at 6 a, like 6.45 in the morning. A reporter was interviewing a woman, a city planner or something like that. And the dude walked in, or walked right up to them. They were on a balcony of a hotel or something like that, and just killed them all. Oh, Mr. Epps here. Perfect timing. So, uh, yeah, which is just extremely unfortunate. I, my heart goes out to these people. I can't believe that. You know, I just, I can't believe that. It, it's so crazy. Um, and he killed him. Killed the reporter, killed the cameraman, and the person that was being interviewed, I believe was shot a couple times, but might survive. Um, and... The crazy thing is, obviously, it was live news, so you didn't see much from the, the broadcasting perspective. You just saw, um, you know, you hear gunshots, and the cameraman drops the camera, of course, because at this point the cameraman has been shot. And then you hear the reporter running and screaming, um, which is just crazy. Like, it, it's crazy watching people... You know, you can literally hear as they die, in, in essence, because they're being shot. But the even crazier thing about this story was that this guy used social media today um, to not only claim it. Like, people were like, oh, they have their, their, their suspect in idea. But this person was like, nope, it's me. Uh, they, he went on Twitter. He went on Facebook. And he used social media to kind of slander and explain why he did and his reasons aren't valid. They're really not valid. You have no reason to to go kill someone in this way. It was not self-defense. There's it, no. And it was really kind of disgusting how he used social media and then he posted the video uh, he filmed himself killing these people. Uh, he filmed himself and I watched the footage. I know I shouldn't have, but I did. And he literally filmed himself on his phone walking right up behind them because they were the cameraman's focus was obviously on the reporting and so was the reporters and the person being interviewed. They were all looking at each other. And no one clearly saw him with his gun clearly out. Like he's holding his gun and he's aiming it at them and then he starts firing. And it's it's crazy. 
and uh, this video is still there because anything that's put on the internet will be saved indefinitely, right? There's no way to actually ever remove, even if you want to try it, there's no way to actually ever remove this stuff. You know, there isn't. Somebody will always find it again, so I'm very, it just hurts me to hear about these kind of things. And it kind of disgusts me that, uh, you know, the thing I love to do and make videos for, unfortunately, became a venue. Now, it wasn't like Facebook's fault or, or YouTube's fault or anything like that. But it just, it disgusts me that not only did this person feel this way enough to kill several people, um, they took pride in it and tried to use social media to justify it. And then use social media just to show it. So, and then this person took the really cowardly approach. So they owned it on social media, but in the second that the cops cornered the person, apparently the guy took a gun to his own head and he may not be dead right now. So the whole situation kind of disgusted me, frankly. And it's just, it blows my brain that this still happens, you know, but, uh, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really discuss in detail, but lately in Canada, reporters have been <sighs> harassed, you know, but it's all relative, you know, like I know a reporter went national and complained that a dude kissed her on the cheek the other day at a Canadian music festival. And then they basically crucified this guy. Turned out to be a 17-year-old dude. But it's situations like this that really put into perspective. And I'm not justifying the kid's actions for the music festival pecking on the cheek. But uh, it's not killing people. You know? They, today... Two, maybe three people lost their lives. Very unnecessarily. Very unnecessarily. And that's the kind of protection we need to give reporters. Not from pecks on the cheek or people yelling... Well, as well from you people yelling dirty stuff and pecks on the cheek, but... It's crazy. So, you know? And uh, I don't have a job that really puts me in harm's way. A lot... And I just, I can't imagine doing that. Because reporter, you don't normally think that you're going to get shot. You might get yelled at. By, you might get drunk people in the background. You might get people yelling obscenities. You know, F or right, you know, so kind of stuff. You might get kissed. But very rarely do you think you're going to go to your job and be shot to death. So... That is really unfortunate. And it always affects me when I think about it. Just how crazy life is and uh, how mental health should be taken seriously. Because obviously this person today had some issues that uh, led him to kill people. And the girl was much younger than I am. Like The reporter I think was only like 24. The cameraman was... I think 30 or something like that. Maybe older. But, uh... Hurts. Hurts when you think about it. So that was a depressing note to start a painting with Jay on. But I had to talk about it. Because it's on my mind. Because it happened this morning. And I just dropped my model. Um, yeah. What else happened this week? Not a whole lot in Jayland. Um, I put up my video, which as I talked about last week, um, asking for more support and explaining my financial situation. I think I did it well. I really do. I think I did it fairly. I don't think I came across as rude or baggy or... Like, I'm holding my videos hostage. Um, and the funny part about this, and I knew this would happen ahead of time, whenever you bring up money, you polarize your audience instantly. Obviously, there are some people in the middle, 
But it's one of those things that, for some reason, really offends people. Like, I know that th right now, I'm going to get thumbs down on this video just for talking about money. That's kind of funny to me. But, uh, yeah, like, a lot of... I did get some more support, obviously, uh, for my Patreon and a little bit for the Warp, and that's awesome. And I thank you, all you people, for considering, even considering supporting my Patreon or, cons or doing it itself. I really do appreciate it. It really means an insane amount that you would help me, you know, fill my dreams. It really does. Um, and of course, <laughs> getting a text message. So, um, what was I saying? Uh, I just lost my train of thought. Oh yeah. But of course, once you start talking about money, it's really funny how offended people get and how people are not only willing, unwilling to, like, I don't mind. If you, if you want to support my content, like by watching it, sharing it, commenting, being a part of it, that's awesome. You know, I, you are supporting me in a way, you know, it's awesome. And I thank you enough. I can't thank you enough for that. If you want to support me through Patreon, obviously it makes more of an impact because, but yeah. But still, you're, you're, they're supporting me. And it's really funny that, like, I knew it would happen, but within an, three or four hours of that video going up, I had lost almost 50, five, zero subscribers. And it took me th two or three days to actually get back to the subscriber count that I was at before putting up that video. So apparently... Um, I offended some people because of um, asking, having the audacity to have, ask for possible help. You know, it's really weird. It is really weird. Um, yeah, and the amount of thumbs down, obviously, it's like my most, it's my in my top five most thumb down videos, but. Uh, Sorry, it's a text message. Um, so, it's always weird. But, uh, so, tough luck. You know, I had to ask, and really, as I said, if, if people don't want to support me financially, but they just want to support my videos by liking, sharing, commenting. That's awesome. And I thank you for it. But if people are so upset that I have in clear minds, I even got messages about this, the audacity of asking for money to play games and to paint miniatures, right? Um, that it, I offended them so much that they're willing to unsubscribe. Okay. I don't care. Really, they're not the subscribers that I want anyway. Because apparently they're, you know, I'm not a very offensive person. I'm really not. I'm pretty easy going, pretty laid back. My channel is very PG. Um, I don't swear much, you know. So if my worst quality is that I, I ask for a little support to my so that I can make videos for you all and uh, produce some awesome content and upgrade my equipment and pe that offends people so that they unsubscribe, so be it. So that was, yeah, my, my Friday. Um, I went to another concert on Saturday. It was really good because it was the last concert of the concert series in Peterborough for the summer. And the closers were a really good country group named Doc Walker, which I've actually been a quasi fan of theirs for a while. Uh, my wife listens to country music. It's the only thing she likes to listen to. Um, the weird thing about this situation though is I have an eidetic memory and I listen to the music obviously with her. So whenever artists play music, like whenever I hear music on the radio, I quickly learn the name of the band, the song, 
name the lyrics. But she doesn't. She just likes to listen to country music without really, like, actually, you know, she likes to hear it but not listen, you know. She doesn't know anything about the country artist. So I've actually, I know more Doc Walker songs, or she she could hear the song and, oh, that sounds familiar. But I actually knew more Doc Walker songs than she did. So it was really good going to the concert and hearing the music. And they were really good live. They were really good. Overall, I'd have to say that my favorite artist of the summer was the worst weather, unfortunately, was Randy Bachman. Uh, he had the lowest attendance of pretty much any concert because the weather was just so bad that day. It was raining and really, really brutal. But uh, by far the best concert of the summer. He was amazing. Doc Walker were probably two or three. I really liked them. They were good. So I saw a lot of uh, Canadian artists, but of course there was one country artist, the, uh, what are they called, Home Free. The five-man a cappella group from Minneapolis, Minnesota who won season uh, three of the sing-off. So they're pretty good. I know, they're a cappella, so they're kind of like, I don't know, a normal concert on Valium. You know, like, they're good. They just have very, they're not a heavy listening to. Because even the beatboxer can't produce the... Uh, you know, the bass guy was pretty bassful as well. But it's just, you know... It's kind of like listening to a song with no bass going. And a lot of songs are high on the treble. On Sunday, I had a great time as well. I took the day off work. and uh, Well, I had the day off work. so, But I went to a gaming event. Uh, every couple months, there's a really cool guy in my... In my in kind of my neighborhood, in Peterborough, uh, not too far from me, like a 10 minute drive, who uh, hosts this just gaming. He, he, he has a large amount of tables at his house, and we come and we play. And there's uh, sometimes he does themed events, like this one was a Xenos Rising event. And so it's cool. You bring your armies, you have fun, you play games all day. Uh, usually people bring food. I don't bring food because I drive all on my motorcycle, and to bring food on a motorcycle is a little bit of a challenge. But, uh, yeah, they bring food. Like, it's, it's awesome. Like, a whole gaming event. It's a great way to get to know the gamers in the community. It's actually been through these that I've met a lot of my my fellow gamers. It was a great time. So, once again, Ian, if you're out there, thank you for the awesome event. I don't think he watches my videos, so that's okay. And I played two games. Um, basically, the goal was to balance the number of Xenos armies and Imperium or other... Like, it was either Xenos or other, basically. They called themselves Allied because... Chaos, uh, th two or three of them were Chaos armies, right? So it's Chaos and Imperium versus Xenos. And it was good. Uh, I was asked, because I was one of the later joiners, because I didn't know if I'd have the day off work, so uh, I just dropped my cell phone. But, um, and I bit my tongue at the same time. So... Uh, I was one of the late joiners, so what I did was, I was talking to Ian, he didn't know if he could balance the armies. So what I did was, I brought a Xenos and an Imperium army. So I was ready to play on either side, depending on whichever side needed me. So I got there, and they did the math, and they were actually one, there was one Xenos more than Imperium. So I played Imperium, which was fun. Like, I brought a fun list either way. They were not extremely competitive, but they were fun and quasi-competitive. They were, you know, they wouldn't get completely walked on, but they wouldn't, they weren't like Triple Vindicator Space Marine List or Ravenwing or, you know, uh, the other one was Orcs, so. So my Orcs list was actually half knob bikers. Half my points were knob bikers and the other half was Grot Tanks. And I was really hoping to play that list as well because it was just hilariously fun. I love Grot Tanks and any excuse to play them, you know, fielding all these little tanks running around the field. Now, again, they're not the most competitive option. But they're fun, they're silly, and sometimes they can be really effective because of you get a few good dice rolls, they do some damage, you know? So I'm done all the silvers. So now I'm going to apply a non-oil shading. Um, that previous step I was just I said, applying iron breaker, not iron breaker, lead belcher. So now I'm just going to give a non-oil shading to them. Basically, these will be done before next week. So next week, I'll start something else, or maybe it'll be basing. But I don't mind. If I finish, if over a period of four weeks, just in my spare time, I, I paint 15 uh, Marines. 
You know what? That's on average a model every two days. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. And I, in the end, at the end of the month, I have 15 less models to paint up. And that makes me happy. Yeah. It does. You know, little things like that. Makes me happy. And eventually I'll start my Deathwing army. I did order uh, quasi recently a uh, Samuel model. He's back in stock. So I'll have Samuel. Because you can't really run Ravenwing without him. I.e., you actually can't run, currently can't run the Ravenwing detachment without Samuel. Which has got to be FAQ'd eventually, because it's a mistake. See, so those of you who don't know, in the Dark Angels book, there's a Ravenwing, there's a Ravenwing detachment, there's a Deathwing detachment, and then there's the come up, there's the um, the Lion Blade Strike Force detachment, and the Lion's Blade Strike Force detachment, you know, has a little bit of everything, but there's also a Deathwing detachment where you can take any HQ that has the Deathwing special rule, which pretty much any HQ with Terminator armor gets the Deathwing special rule, which is all good. And you can have between one and like several HQs. And same for the Ravenwing. You can have between one and, I think, three HQs. Uh, but the problem is with the Ravenwing detachment is the, it says the rule is they must have the Ravenwing special rule to be in this detachment. Uh, and currently, if you give a model a bike, it doesn't give him uh, the Ravenwing special rule. So the only... HQ in the book with the Ravenwing special rule is Sam Ale, which is cool. He's the strongest HQ in the book. He's the best one by far. Except you still can take up to two other HQs in this detachment. Uh, but once again, you can't take any more because uh, no one else qualifies. So it obviously, like rules is intended, obviously giving a bike to an HQ, like a captain or a chaplain or a librarian should give them the Ravenwing special rule. Because giving Terminator armor in the Codex gives the Deathwing special rule. So that's, it has to be rules as intended. Because otherwise it makes no sense. And, uh, but it hasn't happened yet. They haven't FAQ'd anything in a while. Like, I know the Black Library is now where the FAQs go. But there's no Black Library FAQ from any... 2015 codex. So there is no FAQ at the moment for. I'm going to throw a ball for Rubik. But um, there's no FAQ for any new codex from this year. So right now the, the Ravenwing detachment is kind of in limbo. And you can play however you want. You can play rules as written or rules as intended. On this, I'm really rules as intended. Most of the time, I'm rules as intended. Because rules as written is... I don't know. The, the problem is they're both... Um, they're both up to... A lot of the time, it's up to the judgment of the person reading them. You know? Interpretation. But, um... Well, it's just silly. So hopefully, eventually, they FAQ it and fix it. As I said, right now, I'm just non-oiling my... guys. So as I said, every, and you know that saying, every subscriber matters. That is true. I do feel that. When, my videos, I am thankful for every subscriber I have. What I meant earlier in my comment about they're not the ones I want is seriously, if people are that offended that easily because I have the idea to ask for her money, they're going to leave. And they're going to, you know what, as I said, I don't yeah. I don't care. Because I'm going to have to keep asking. You know, unfortunately, if you look at the top channels for support, they ask a lot. In fact, Mini Wargaming, who is by far the most successful, they make more a month off the warp than every other YouTube channel in our niche combined. But they ask monthly for help, and they get it. So, those who don't ask don't receive, unfortunately, in our niche. Now I'm going to have to keep asking. It's just the way. 
And I really want to just be able to do this for a living. And that's what it takes. I make a lot of videos and stuff. This week we'll hopefully have a How to Play 40k out. It's Wednesday, as I said, so I can still edit it, possibly. Um, I have most of what I want to do in my mind. And I'm not going to ruin the surprise, but I've started painting uh, a free painting tutorial. I'm not saying who, what it is. Um, but there's going to be a free painting tutorial next month because of the support from my Patreoners. So, that's good stuff. And if one of the levels is hit, uh, it's the $600 level, I'm pretty sure, of support. Every month, I will do a painting tutorial, and it will be a recently released model for any game. So it'll most likely be something like Age of Sigmar, or maybe like a new Tau model, because a new Tau codex is apparently coming out soon. And then the, uh, a random person who supports me from Patreon will get it. That level has not been hit yet, so it won't be given out yet. But when that happens, it'll be a lot of fun to paint up a brand new model and give it to a Patreon supporter. That'll be good stuff. Oh yeah, so I might as well talk about my gaming day. It was a lot of fun. So it was called yeah. So as I said, I played Xeno. I played Human Story Imperium. I think Imperium won. Uh, probably my list was silly. Like it wasn't again. It wasn't it wasn't a walkover list. It wasn't the uber competitive list. But it was silly. I brought five librarians. I brought Librarius Conclave with Tigurius. So a lot of my points were invested in these librarians. And all I did was I brought a, a Demi Company. Uh, one squad had a Malta Gun for the Tacticals. One, two squads had Flamers and one of them had a Drop Pod. Um, and then I brought a base squad of five uh, Assault Marines. And I brought Devastators with Last Cannons because they're awesome, and Imperial Fist have Tank Hunter, so you want to give Last Cannons that. Uh, two squads of Terminators, no, three squads of Terminators, sorry, three squads of Terminators because it was the first company strike force. And then I brought the Librarian Conclave, that was my list. I uh, so brought Tigurius. A librarian in Terminator armor, uh, and three other librarians not in Terminator armor, all level two. And it was just a lot of fun. So I just kept rolling different psychic powers, grabbing them all, and then you know giving them to Tiggy, because uh, Tigurius is amazing with librarian conclave because he not only rolls the psychic power, he rolls the psychic powers on the to get table. So every time I chose telepathy and gave him invisibility because invisibility is so easy to get. Um, when you get to re-roll, and he's level 3, so basically you get 6 dice rolls to see if you can roll a 5 to give him invisibility, and it happened every time. And so then Tigurius was casting powers on a 2-up for almost the entire game. I think at one point it was a 3-up, but almost the entire game was a 2-up. And Tigurius also has the ability to re-roll his uh, psychic powers on the on the, trying to activate them. So he was rolling 2-up re-rollables, so I, it was just a lot of fun. And I was just... Casting psychic powers and in hilariousness. So he was fun. Oh yeah, my captain was Lysander. Because Imperial Fist, you gotta run Lysander. He's awesome. Very expensive, but he's awesome. Um so that was fun. And I won both games, but they were both very good games. Uh, the first game I actually ended up playing against Stu. And what was really cool about this event was all the Imperium people put their armies on the table and deployed. Not knowing who we were up against. And then the Xenos people got to walk up to any table that they wanted and start putting down their models in counter-deployment to us. And the Xenos got to go first. So we had to put ourselves in a relatively you know, defensive position. And I had no idea what army I was facing. It was a lot of fun. And I ended up facing Stu, bringing orcs. And it was a good game. Uh, the final score wasn't very close, but the game was really close. It was because we were fighting over... Uh, objectives, and in the end, just my guys ended up on the objectives at the end of the game. And I won because of it. But it was a very close game. It was an awesome game. So thank you very much, Stu, for the very good first game. Um, and it was also cool, because being an orc player, uh, I looked at his list, and I was able to give him a couple pointers that aren't intuitive. 
Um, for example, a lot of orc, new orc players don't know that, well, A, pretty much everything in the orc codex comes base six up armor save, which really sucks. Like, it, it really sucks. Um, but a couple of things, like, people don't know that is that uh, bikes, for example, whenever you give an, a model a bike in the codex, it gives them a four up armor save. It doesn't give them heavy armor. It gives them a four up bike armor save, both from shooting and in close combat. But no one really realized that, and you, read the, you kind of forget it when you read the rules. So, again, Stu didn't realize this, and I was able to help him out. It was really good, you know, as a fellow orc player. Because for every bike, he paid for every armor on top of, um, on top of the bike. So now his list became cheaper. So, that was good. But it was a good time. I like playing against Stu. Him and I gel well, because he, we're both pretty relaxed individuals, and... He loves painting as well, and enjoys the hobby. He loves to play, so you know, good stuff. And then, just for fun, because as you, as you, most of the viewers know, I'm not really a klepto, but I like to goof around and take people's models. Stu was my kind of victim of the day, and just throughout the day, I was bugging him and moving his models around. So at the end of the day, he was all packed up in his car, and just to mess with him, I went into his car without. A, he was like ten feet away from the car at the time. I opened up the door, took stuff out of the car, took his entire army out of his car, and then put everything back in other than his army. So everything appeared normal. And just as a joke, I had this extra box with me at the end of the night, so I went to go put it in his car, and he saw me do it, and he, he locked his car. And he's like, nice try, Jay. And I said, ha, nice try, eh? And then I was like, oh, and then I pointed, and I'm like, Oh, and here's your entire army back. And it was just funny. Like, I just made him laugh. I was going to give it to him either way. But, uh, so right now, by the way, what I'm doing is I'm taking the Shafty Bone. And I'm painting the uh, paper pieces, the paper parts of the uh, purity seals. So it was just a lot of fun. Like, I just, we got a good laugh out of it. Because I was like, oh, you think you caught me, eh? I got your whole army. Just one of those, like, that old Simpson episode where Homer goes to Bart and he's like, I got your nose. And then Bart goes, I got your wallet. And then flushes it. But it was funny. So, note to self, don't trust Jay at public events. Oops. You know, I wonder why people stop me at the border. Um, so that was good. Yeah, great day. So my weekend was pretty good. Got videos done. This week I'm relatively on schedule with my videos. The warp's caught up. Taste, you know, Wednesday, but... This week's uh, painting tutorial in the, in the uh, warp, if you want to go check out the warp, is a Dire Troll Axer. Dire Troll Axer? Axer? Troll Blood Axer, I believe it's called. Sorry, not Dire Troll. Here he is. I haven't based him yet because the basin scheme is yet to be determined. He turned out pretty cool. I used an airbrush for some parts, his cape. And uh, I love the way his skin turned out, really like charactery, really, uh, you know, it's a lot of definition. Cold's doing out good. So that's him. So check out the warp if you want to see how I made him. How I painted him up, I mean. I didn't make the model, I just painted him. I'm really enjoying playing the Vanilla Marines. I'm going to get back to my Orcs and Tyranids and other armies eventually. Actually, the one army I should focus on more lately is, is I really should do more uh, battle reports with Dark Angels. Because I've done one so far, playing Dark Angels, and I've played against Dark Angels twice. And we kind of realized, yeah, Ravenwing is really strong. Everything else in the Codex, yeah, a couple of good things, like the Dark Shroud. But the Dark Shroud is amazing when combined with Ravenwing. You know, most of it's like, you can take this thing and add it to Ravenwing and make a really good army. But it's very few combinations it's like, and then add Terminators. Or add Greenwing. You know, a couple people really want to do the double Demi Company list, and that's cool, because then all you need to do is take one squad of scouts, so it's cheaper to take the double Demi Company with Dark Angels as opposed to Vanilla Marines, but except Vanilla Marines get a lot more choices, because you don't actually have to choose Devastators, you can choose Devastator Centurions, or, you know, you don't have to choose, um... Assault Marines, you can choose Land Speeders, or, you know, you can choose Assault Devastators. 
So there's more combinations. But yeah, and this week's just been a lot of work. As usual. It sucks, summer's over. Like, I'm feeling like summer's over. I think next week is Labor Day weekend, but it feels right now, today's a very, the last couple days have been really cold here in Peterborough. And it feels like fall. Like outside, I'm expecting the leaves to start falling any, any day now. It's It feels very much like autumn in uh, the weather. And Rubik has found a toy that makes sounds. Thank you. So, falls on its way. Summer is almost over. That's unfortunate. I love summer. It's such a fun. Ex summer is the season of like life to me. It's always more fun and vi things are vibrant and people are happier and it's just more fun. But it's okay. Falls on its way. The year, you know, it's flying by. It's crazy. It, it's just time. It's. I feel like with every passing week, it be, it just passes so much a little bit quicker. You know? Deep stuff with Jay. So, but yeah. So, throw that for Bro Rubik, so that he leaves for second one. I'm gonna have to take it from them because this is gonna get annoying on the video. Put down. You'll get this back after the video. Lay down. Rubik, lay down. Good boy. Stay there. So, yeah. As I said, life's okay. You know what? I'm going to keep working hard, working towards my channel, working towards my goals. I'm just going to have to work a lot more elsewhere as well because finances come up and, you know, that's it. I'm not complaining. I'm not... I'm gonna deal with it. I'm gonna work hard. I just I had to be honest in my video. I know I got a few messages like saying I'm coming off as if I don't get money, I'm gonna quit, which is not the case per se. It's just if I don't get financial support or more support in my videos, I just can't continue to make all these videos a week. You know, I can't. Maybe this one might survive. We'll see. This is probably one of the easier ones to survive because it just requires me sitting down for an hour, painting miniatures and talking to you all. So it's, it's the least amount of editing and it's the least amount of real, like I love painting and it's the least amount of work to me. Like I don't need to pre, you know, look at my questions and do that for the Q and J's or the edit, heavy editing. The most insane editing is by far how to play 40K, by far. And uh, the shade looks, uh, looks to be dry-ish. So... I'll start in a minute uh, dry brushing iron breaker onto these areas. That's cool. And then my, I'll finally tidy them up with um, gray liner. Finish all the areas. And then I'm going to be done them. Just base them, paint them up. They'll be on the table. Maybe it, when I'm done painting, like I don't have that many more vanilla marines left. Uh, I'm going to do a Razorback, a Landspeeder Storm. Uh, what else? Dreadnought. Some scouts. I don't have the scouts. The scouts might be Dark Angel themed. Because of the the need. Like, I, I can see them coming into a few lists. I only have one squad of scouts. And you can't really run with one squad of scouts from Imperial Fist. You have to have three, I think. So having a squad for the Dark Angels, which they can require just one Dark Angel, might work. So I might just do that. We'll see. So what am I looking for right now? I'm looking for Iron Breaker so that I can uh, paint the metallics. Nope, that's not it. What else? Blue Jays. Oh man. Blue Jays, Blue Jays, Blue Jays. They're kicking butt. I'm I, I've become more of a Blue Jays fan this year again. I, I kind of I always used to love watching baseball, and now I've kind of fallen in love again with it because this is the year. And certain people can say this. Any fans of a team know that they kind of feel it when this is a year, you know. And this is what it feels like for the Jays right now. They're such a good team this year, and they're winning. 
they're actually winning really well. And when I was talking to uh, like Ken at at Gen Con, Ken's also a huge baseball fan. He's a White Sox fan, pretty sure. White Sox or Cubs? Pretty sure White Sox. Pretty sure White Sox. Wrong brush. This brush does not meet my requirements. Um, so Ken's a baseball fan, and we were talking, and that was when it was actually a Gen Con that the Jays made a lot of big name moves to acquire these guys. Um, they required you know a lot of players over a short period of time, and it kind of was like, wow, they got this guy and this guy and this guy. And Ken made the joke that, uh, well, Jays are just playing for a wild card spot because at the time they weren't even close to being top of the division. They were playing, you know, and that's saying there's a wild card in, in baseball. Mm, don't really want that brush either. There's a bunch of brushes. I'm, I'm debating between what I should use. This dry brushing. I lost my, I recently I lost my good dry brush. I kind of used it out. Maybe this one? Uh, this one? Sure. It's a bit thick. I'll switch to an old brush and just use my normal brush. Um, so they, at the time they were playing, you know, it looked like they were going to be playing for, you know, a wild card spot. Because now in baseball there's a wild card system in which teams that come in, uh, essentially the top team in each division goes to the playoffs. But there's only three divisions in each side. So then there's two wild cards out of all the other teams in each conference, the National League and the American League. Um, there's a, uh, a wild card game, but it's a one game wild card. And then the winner of that game gets into the playoffs. So essentially five teams make it, two teams battle out, and one of them eliminates each other in one game. And then the rest play, you know, in the playoffs. And I was like, oh, well, at least, you know, Jays haven't actually made the playoffs since they won the World Series back in 93. And I was I was an addict of the game back then. Like, I used to watch, I can name every player. I can still name every player that was in that lineup and what positions they were playing. That was a year, you know, like, Jays won it in 92 and 93. And the thing is, with, with baseball, and a lot of sports in general, Canadians don't have good teams and don't get to win things very often. You know, even like I know people will instantly jump to hockey, but seriously, a Canadian team has not won the Stanley Cup in all, in over twenty years. You know, several times we've made it to the finals. Uh, you know, the Flames have made it, the Oilers have made it, uh, Sens have made it, Canadians have made it, Leafs have not made it in a long time. But no team is, no Canadian team has won the Stanley Cup in like since the early nineties. The Montreal Canadiens. So, a Canadian team has never won the championships in basketball because the Raptors, they've only made it to the second round of the playoffs once. Uh, the Grizzlies went bankrupt, basically, and got bought out by the Americans and became Memphis Grizzlies. Um, baseball, the Jays won the World Series in 92 and 93. Expos never won. And then became the Washington Nationals. And, yeah, so Canadians, we actually don't get a lot of professional sports wins. Like, we're, we're in a lot of American leagues, but we don't win. Not even hockey. Like, hockey is the one that people think we win a lot of, but we don't. Now, most winning NHL teams are filled with Canadian players, you know, and a lot of the stars are Canadian, But so the Stanley Cup ends up coming to these areas. Um, but we're not, you know, it's not a Canadian team. So when the Canadian teams are doing well, you, f you do find that almost the entire nation goes behind them. And that's what kind of happens with Canadian teams in playoffs for hockey, is that Canadian teams eventually fall by the wayside, and then the Canadians just end up throwing their support behind other Canadian teams. But uh, it's that feeling this year with baseball, that the Jays, since the, the All-Star game, have turned their playing around, and... Before the, they made all these trades, they were basically a 50-50 team, so they'd win about half their games at best. But a 50-50 team does not get into the playoffs in most situations. Rarely. team They're a good team, but they're not a playoff team. And since then, they've won like 80% of their games. Maybe even higher. So it's been really fun. And I, I even went and got to see a game in person. And I'm going to see if I can do, maybe go see one other game in cheap seats before the end of the year. 
um, once they make the playoffs, or if they make the playoffs, sorry, if they make the playoffs, but I think it's going to be ones. The playoff tickets get really expensive, obviously. My dream would be to go see a playoff game, but it's too expensive right now. I can't afford it, right? Someone who's like, please help support my videos should not be like, hey, I'm going to go see an expensive Jays game. A little bit hypocritical. Um, but, uh, yeah, it really feels that way with this team. You know, last night I was watching a game, and uh, they were down to the bottom, sort of top of the ninth inning, where they won. They ended up winning by one point, one run. And they were against Texas. Texas Rangers are a really good team. But uh, they won. Jays won. They pulled out the victory from you know, the Crips of Defeat. And tonight we have our best pitcher going. And I love this. I'm talking sports with a bunch of, while well, painting miniatures. It's like the best of both worlds. Also, that's not in focus at all. It's close to focus. Let's try resetting. There we go. Not like you guys are really watching what I'm doing anyway. It's all this, I just rant and we paint along and we get work done. All's good. 45 minutes. I'll probably go fill it, finish the silvers before I, the end of this video. And then I'll, between this week and next week, I will finish them up. My goal is to have these models done before next week's paint, which, I, which isn't bad. Because all I really do is clean them up a little bit, clean up the yellows, and then do gray liner, and then uh, basing. And then uh, and they're done. What else? Uh, rumors have it that uh, Tau might be in the next Codex. And apparently it's going to come up in the next few weeks. That's cool. Tau kind of need a new Codex. I really hope, though, the new Codex... I'm not saying fixes Tau, but I'm hoping it makes them more of a than a one-trick pony in a one-dimensional playing style. I don't want to insult any Tau players out there, but Tau are really a boring army. I They are. You know, they're not a fun army to face in my opinion, even play. Because all you're doing is, the, the only competitive build right now, it's kind of like somewhat, some people argue with Tyranids, the only competitive strategy is you got to turtle. You turtle in a corner. you got to make sure that one guy conga lines into a center squad, and then you're good to go. You know, you just, it's a really, I don't know, not the most fun or dimensional play style, in my opinion. It's why I don't collect Tau. It's because they kind of bore me. I don't like that play style where I just sit in a corner and be like, I'm sitting in a corner behind an Aegis defense line. Come at me, or I win. It's not... That's, like, for battle reports especially. You know, most of the time, people put up a Tau battle report, you find that they don't get as many views. Or that just people don't like them as much. Because Tau are not a fun army to watch. And I'm really hoping that... Games Workshop fixes that with Tau and makes them a more... Uh, gives them more dimension for their play styles, not just I'm sitting back in a corner of the game and I'm going to shoot you. And that's the problem. Like, Tau have that problem with Maelstrom of War in the sense that a Tau player, I call it Towerling, because you turtle up in a corner um, and it's really hard to get them to other people's deployment zones. And if they can't table their opponent... Uh, they lose. And so at the same time, they're not as competitive in, in 7th edition because of Maelstrom War. So for that reason alone, they need to be fixed. Their play style. And just for the interestingness of a Tau army. You know, Tau would be much more fun. If I think I personally think they should remove... Um, they're not going to, but I think they're, I should, they should remove the uh, assisted Overwatch. Because... I, again, this is my opinion, but... 7th edition is about shooting. It's not about close combat. It really isn't. And Tau have one of the best shooty armies in the game. And Eldar, I would say, is number one. But Tau are a, dis are a close second or third. People debate between Space Marines... Uh, Imperial Guard in a lot of ways, but I'd say the debate for top three would be Space Marines, Eldar, and Tau. Eldar being number one. Tau have access to the best guns in the game and a lot of the best rules, you know? Um, in, in so many ways, marker lights just break the rules because they allow them to fire at insane weapon skills or ignore cover. And ignore cover, to me, is the strongest rule in the game right now because cover is really important to a lot of armies. Like Ravenwing, right? 
they completely rely on cover. If you can ignore cover, um, you're in trouble. They have a lot of interceptor. They have a lot of AP. They have a lot of high strength. The base gun in their game is strength 5, AP 5. So they're normal dudes, right? So they're a good, shooty army. So I... Sorry about that. I forgot to uh, take some footage off my camera, so it actually overloaded. But I think, to be honest, I think that would make Tau more interesting. Because apparently they're getting a new suit, which is cool. Um, I really think the Riptide should be a walker. But uh, that's a different story. Alright, number one. Increase the ballistic skill of Tau Fire Warriors. Makes them more offensive. Cool. And B, take away assisted Overwatch crap. Because to me, it just makes a boring decision. And that alone, if you took that rule away, I know it would nerf Tau in a lot of ways, but it also removes the constraint on Tau to only do a single action. And it would free them up to actually move. Now, you can give Tau... Maybe give them the ability to fire Overwatch at a better ballistic skill, like they did with Dark Angels, so that one squad will Overwatch at a very high ballistic skill, you know? But not everyone firing every frickin' gun in the entire army at you. Like, it's just... It's silly. And the problem is, again, I play some assaulty armies, but to me, it's just... It's, it's really silly. You know? Um... I don't like that assisted overwatch. And I don't even like the fact that Dark Angels have access to it either. Because again, it promotes a really one-dimensional play style. So it would fix Tau. If, you know, it would still make them competitive. Better ballistic skill. Overwatch a full ballistic skill even. But not this assisted stuff. Because as I said, it becomes a crutch. It's just like, um, as a joke, I, the second game I played was, was also a great game was against a Tyranid player at the, um, at the event. Now, so I played against Orc player and a Tyranid player, so I was very familiar with both armies. And the Tyranid player, uh, second, I didn't know his army. I never looked at it ahead of time. I said, Tyranids, oh, so how many Flyrants, right? And he's like, two. I'm like, okay, because that's a competitive Tyranid list, right? Yet, t t you know, Tyranids are almost a mono build in a lot of ways. Again, people... The creativity is lost because of the internal balance. And I do find that a lot of the Tau playstyles have gone away because people see this combined Overwatch as the only way to play. So they just shoot you and then they marker light you and then uh, they wait for you to assault them so that every guy in the entire army gets to fire at you because I have one or maybe... They should change it. Simple way. Change it from squads within uh, six inches, right, to models within six inches. Because, again, you can't do that conga line of crap thing where, like, one guy's here and he'll have every squad within an inch or within six inches. And it's just like, okay, that's silly. It is really silly. And it puts other armies... Because, again, Tyranids are not a top-level army any, anymore. They haven't been for a while. Orcs are definitely not a competitive-level army. It just it's, it throws the imbalance even further to uh, the shooting side. Because then assault armies are like, good luck. You know? I, I, and the thing is, it's, I'm not biased against Tau. I'm, I feel this even very strongly for Ravenwing that Ravenwing are going to become an extremely popular build because they're they're by far the strongest thing in the in the in the codex and Ravenwing are going to be a really boring army to face because you know the strategy it's like necrons but uh, again it can be a really boring army if people play it a certain way Ravenwing are just going to dance around you they're like Eldar but with space marines uh, they're going to dance around you if you catch them in close combat, you're going to kill a few, but then they're just going to hit and run away because the entire army with them will have hit and run because Ravenwing have hit and run. Um, and then they shoot at you. So they're not going to hit a lot of you because they're, they're going to jink galore. The, the name of the game will be jink. And... I don't know. 
it's not a very interesting playstyle towards me. And Raven Wing's a cool looking army, great theme, great fluff. Just a second. Sorry about that, another interruption. But we're almost done here. Silvers are basically done. Are they done? Mm. No. Let's finish up the silvers here quickly. And then, uh, yeah. So, as I said, I just, I'm nothing against Tau. I think Tau are really cool, aesthetic looking army. They're, they're really cool. And, you know, gun wise, they're cool. I just, I, I, it bugs me when, unfortunately, the rules pigeonhole a strategy or a mono build. You know, like, I don't play, I play Tyranids, obviously, but I don't play Double Flyer because it's just not as fun to me. You know, I'd rather have, you know, options. So, but, uh, yeah, so I'm hoping that's the thing with the new codex. I'm really hoping that they make Tau fun and that they make Tau interesting. You know, not, no rules leaks apparently so far. Not many rules leaks, but apparently they're getting a new giant model, like a new Riptide size thing. And uh, that's cool. And what else? And there's another rumor that there's going to be a new, uh, like, they've done a couple of these limited edition box sets. Um, you know, one of them was Tyranids versus Blood Angels. And my favorite one, of course, was the Orcs versus Space Wolves. And, um... You know, each one has the rulebook in it, and apparently they're going to do it again with Tau. And Marines, vanilla Marines, apparently. Rumor has it Raven Guard. Raven Guard theme. So that'd be pretty cool. I'd probably pick one up. Um, just so that, because usually they have some custom sculpts in there that are cool. We'll see. Depending on the models. We'll see. Because the Raven Guard I can easily add into my army. Well, maybe not. We'll see. I'll have to look at the, what's involved. What else is new in the news? For Apparently. Another rumor is that, well, it's not a rumor, there are pictures. Uh, GW is about to release a line of paints, GW is, for that are airbrush ready. And that happens, definitely predict, definitely expect some reviews. I'm going to get my hands on them because I love airbrushing. And I have a lot of, I've experienced with several paint companies worth of airbrushing paints. You know, I've used um, Vallejo. The ones I typically use are Minotaur. And, uh... Yeah, I definitely have some experience, so I'd love to try them out and see how they do and how they fare against uh, the other big companies. Because Forge World already has a line of airbrush-ready paints. But, um, you know, GW having them is different. And I'm hoping that what they do is they airbrush, they just basically make their more popular colors airbrush-ready. And that'd be amazing. I would love to have, you know, Blood Red, not Blood Red, so that's the old name, um, Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet as airbrush ready. It'd be awesome. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, GW just released a new piece of terrain. And what I love to do is I love to show war gamers the terrain and be like, how much do you think this is? Because it looks awesome, that new chaos building thing. But the, the, the final package one, like where everything comes in it, is like $1,400 Canadian. And if mini wargaming gets it, I'll be like, dudes, you're wasting your money. But it's it looks it looks really cool. But um, oh my goodness, it's just so expensive to spend fourteen hundred dollars on that piece of terrain. Now it, it's the whole table worth. It looks awesome. It's just wow, like that is that is really crazy, you know. But it looks really good. I just couldn't imagine spending fifteen hundred dollars on a single piece of terrain set, you know. It would make very good thematic games, I agree. But, uh... So right now I'm doing this, I'm just going to quickly add some Agrax Earthshade over the paper parts of the Purity Seals. But yeah, that's my thoughts. Tau, they have potential to be a fun army again. I just want them to be a fun army. That's all I need. You know, not a mono build, not a mono tactic. Um, bring the fun back. That's what I mean. You know, that makes a fun army, in my opinion. A fun army, to me, is an army that you can build however you wish, and play however you wish. Like orcs, they're always going to be a fun army. People who play orcs love orcs because you can do whatever you want. You can make what all you can customly make a lot of your stuff. They're not a mono build 
uh, for an army. They're not a mono strategy. Usually it involves assault, but not always. You can invoke gun lines. You can do everything. Uh, they're fun. And thematically, they're great. So they're just not rules-wise great, but people still play them because we're, they're a fun army. So I'm hoping Tau gets some good updates to bring them in 7th edition and maybe bring them in line with other armies. But I'm hoping that it doesn't make a mono-build army or it auto-includes galore or just an army that huddles in a corner and doesn't do anything for the entire game. You know? Uh, I've played mo many games against Tau players that you don't even have a movement phase. It's just like, I'm not moving. Because I know if I move, you might assault me or do something. I'm just going to stand here for the entire game. I'm like, alright. That was fun. Movement phase, done. Shooting phase, takes forever. Assault phase, no, no, none. No, you know, it's just not the most fun game to play. It's okay. So... We should probably end it here. Uh, I could work on the, the gray liner areas, but uh, it's been a pretty long video as well. I've had a good while well, talking and stuff. So let's end. So that concludes another painting with Jay. They're coming along. They're coming along well. You know, they'll be done soon. And as always, my my condolences to all the people of the Virginia reporter shooting. I don't, it just really, it affects me when people use social media in these weird ways. You know, when people film themselves killing other people and put it online, it's weird. It really kind of affects me and how it shows how powerful media has become, you know, and, uh, and social media specifically. So craziness, but I hope you didn't bum me up. My question to you is today is what makes an army fun to you? That's my big thing. Do you feel Tau's a fun army? Awesome. What do you want to see? So my two questions to you. What do you want to see in the next Tau Codex if they're the next ones up? Um, to make them not only come, you know, fun, but competitive. Same time. Yeah, and what makes an army fun to you? What makes an army fun? Thematics? Do you love the look? Do you love the feel? Do you love the style? What makes an army fun to you? Those are my big questions to you. So as always, thank you so much for watching. And most importantly, thank you for being continued to subscribers. Because I know that all the people who unsubscribed me last week aren't watching this. They don't paint along with me. It's all good. So thank you so much for supporting me. How, how much you do, uh, Patreon, The Warp, or just simply sharing my videos and painting along with me. That is support. And I will always be thankful for you all. So thank you so much for that. And uh, yeah, hope you got stuff done. Stay tuned for next week's painting uh, with Jay, which I'll hopefully be moving on to other things. Maybe not. We'll see. Thanks to Ms. Jay saying happy painting with me.